Electricity, shocking, erratic, and the second element the young purple dragon acquires in The Legend of Spyro. Greetings historians, welcome to Lore of the Dragon. Electricity is quite the tool to have in The Legend of Spyro. Mastered by both purple dragons and the guardian of the element Voltaire, electricity is among one of the elements given major importance in The Legend of Spyro. Outside of the games, from what I can find, it originally was supposed to be blue or purple, but ended up being yellow as we see in the games. Blue electricity was mentioned by Jared Pollan on DeviantArt, and I was told of art of purple electricity that was found on an old Spyro archive, which I was shown the link for by Crystal Blazer. And it does look official, but I'm not 100% sure if it is, if that makes sense. It is said to be an element of the thinking dragon. If honed through being clever and quick-witted, one can master the element. As can be seen after Spyro is hit and imbued with its power, it is honed by the electric guardian Voltaire, and used to dispatch the forces of the Dark Master, once mastered. It takes an adept sense of timing and hardened nerves to effectively release this power from a dragon's body. Otherwise, one could fail to properly release it. For those who do, those dragons might have something of a higher intellect and are prone to talking quite a bit, which explains Voltaire. It sounds like from what I've read, this is caused by the electricity element and or the training involved, which is quite interesting. And I wonder if the training and element of other dragons affects their personality, but I digress. Since the element is quite free form. It could lead to a master being able to express their element in many ways, and one could charge their horns, claws, tails, and wingtips, and quote, project static electric manifestations. This, I imagine, is like the elemental trails left behind by Spyro when he's swinging his tail and claws around with the other elements. In addition, electricity can be put into objects that could carry currents which could be used for a multitude of things, but the example that is given by Jared Pawn are traps. Perhaps the best place to learn such abilities would be at Concurrent Skies. At the time before the war, it was said that the electric dragons maintained the storms there, but after they were forced away or slain by Cinder and it became her fortress, the storms were left unattended. We have some proof of this, from art depicting Voltaire defending concurrent skies in one of the cutscenes from A New Beginning. It could be that the electric dragons, such as Masters, could train with lightning, experimenting with it in a naturally stormy area. This could go as well for younger dragons who could learn from these Masters or older dragons that were, again, simply maintaining the area. The implication of freeform electricity being able to make many things makes me wonder what they could have made besides traps. There are the conduits or centuries in concurrent skies made of electricity and crystal, and what's to say there aren't electric wires here and there, though that would be slightly advanced for what we see in The Legend of Spyro. Honestly, it is quite the powerful thing, as with electricity, the dragons could have made many wonders with it before the war. But that's just my own speculation, though it is fun to think about what could be when it comes to electricity. This even goes for colors. Yellow for the basic color of electricity, and magenta is shown for the conduits in concurrent skies. The conduits also have a blue shell around the inner crystal. And again, blue was mentioned to be the color of electricity early, as well as purple supposedly, but again, I can't 100% confirm purple electricity. While there are many abilities associated with the electricity element, Spyro was only seen wielding a few, some even with the names attributed to them. These names from A New Beginning and The Eternal Night are Ikomar's Almighty Electric Storm, Penagar's Thundering Electric Arcs, Zygoren's Thundering Electric Orb, and The Fury of Angtor's Raging Storm. These masters have no lore attributed to them, much like their fire, ice, and earth counterparts. And the names of the abilities themselves I'm not sure to shed light on who they were, unfortunately. It would have been nice to perhaps see more into who these were and to actually see names in Dawn of the Dragon, but perhaps forever they will be confined to an elemental wheel. As always, a big thank you to my Patreons, Jabby, Lazy Shaggy, Kiasushin, Lacko312, ConquerFan91, Abyssal Blue, and Nightmare Spyro. 
I'll see you all the next time we talk. Stay safe, historians.